Hi, welcome to the Game Splanner. I'm Jeff the Game Splanner, and today I'm Game Splanning Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. So, this is Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. How is it different? How is it similar to the Castles of Burgundy? I'm going to make an assumption that you have played the Castles of Burgundy, or that you have at least watched my videos from a couple of weeks back of the Castles of Burgundy. Now, I have spent a lot of my gaming times going, oh, yeah, Castles of Burgundy. I actually ended up getting it and I really enjoyed it. So I went out and got the other versions so I could just do a compare and contrast. I find that this version works really similarly but as a dice game is really nice. So the dice get rolled by one player. Everyone has the same dice to choose from. No one is deleting anything or anything like that. We're just making selection. It could end up that two players have identical sheets at the end of the game. It's probably not going to end up that way because you have unlimited selection of the dice, but there is that chance. So there are two dice that have colours on them. There are two dice that have numbers one to six, and you are selecting a colour and a number. So you have choice two colours, choice two numbers to go with those colours. And what that is enabling you to do is to mark a area around the starting castle and then gradually building out. So you want to have available to you as many different areas as possible. If there is a role that you're simply unable to find a way to get it in, you can always just circle a orange spot and that orange spot allows you to change the number on a future roll. When you finish a area of a colour, you will get points for that depending on how far through the game you are. So the earlier in the game you can do it, there are three phases. If you do it in phase one and there are four spots, it can be worth 10 points. But later in the game, that might only be worth seven points. I'm just making these numbers up, of course, I don't have the score sheet in front of me. But that's kind of, there's a little bit of a change of value of spots. So there are spots that can only be taken by a one or two die. There are spots that can only have a three or four. There are spots that can only have a five or six. There are spots that are able to be filled in by any number as long as the number is not the same as the number already in the box or already in the, the hexes next to it, the, the joining hexes. There are spots that can be filled in with any number but once an area is filled in with a number you must use the same number again. Each of the different types of field will score slightly differently or will do something slightly different. And so you finish up a type of field, you're circling the area of that colour and that then enables you to do something in future turns. So one of them is you can change the number as already discussed, one of them is you can change the colour. One of them means, and I think it's the mine from memory, the grey one, enables you to, in a future turn, use your normal move and then you can use one of those grey markers to be able to do another turn off the same die roll. However, you can't use the exact same combination. So if there's, say, a 5 and a 6 and a, I don't know, a green and a yellow, you could use the green 6 and then the green 5. Or you could use the green six and then the yellow six, for example. But with each of these bonuses, you can only use one of the bonuses per turn. So that stops you from being able to use a bonus to change a number and then use another bonus to do the die thing again. There's a lot of thinking on it, but it moves through relatively quickly compared to the original game. In fact, I can turn over a game of this in probably about 20 minutes. The box says 15 to 30. And yeah, I think that's probably right. Once you know the game, it rolls around fairly quickly. This is a relatively easy game to play. I think if you understand the original game, it makes conceptually makes ideas work. But I think with this one, if you don't know the original game, then playing it, it doesn't matter. Like you, you can do the thing because it's understandable what you're doing and there's no necessity to have the backing of the original game behind you to think, oh, oh, if I do this, I can do that and that, that. It, this is one of those games that just 
rolls around really, really easily. So look, I think I'll leave it there. Please go ahead and watch my gameplay slash game explanation because there's only one video for it of the Castles of Burgundy, the dice game. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.